All right, so now we're going to start chapter one in calculus. And so this one, once again, this is probably going to be a lot of review. There is um, a few new things, and they're kind of setting the stage for how we're going to apply these um, concepts, the calculus concepts, to business. And so we got to learn um, some new terminology. Um, the Cartesian plane, however, in distance, this should be review. So as far as the Cartesian plane, remember the Cartesian plane, it's probably pretty basic to you guys right now because you know, you remember, for example, that the quadrants, we have the two axes and it divides the region into four quadrants and we name the quadrants starting with the upper right as one and then we go around counterclockwise. And you know the x-axis and the y-axis, you know how to plot points, you know where the origin's at, so all of that. But you just need to um, know that this is um, a very important concept. So back um, years ago, a French mathematician by the name of René Descartes kind of discovered this, and that's why it's called the Cartesian plane. Another terminology for it is the rectangular coordinate system. But it really is important because it allows us to visualize relationships between two variables. And um, that helps us a lot when we're trying to um, look at representations, graphical representations of things to see how they do relate to each other. Okay, So one of the ways that we use it is in um, finding distance between two points. And let's say we have this right triangle here, and you remember from geometry a very important theorem relating the lengths of the sides. And the two squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So using the Pythagorean theorem then helps us to find the distance between two points. All right, let's take the point, let's say negative 3, 6. We'll put it up here. And then over here, let's take the point 2, 5. And so if we're looking for, okay, that looks like 2.5, 2 comma 5, there we go. So if we're looking for the distance between those two points or the length of the segment whose endpoints are those two points in, we're looking for the same thing. So distance and length, it's the same thing. Well, if we apply it to a right triangle, we're going to, let's go to negative 3, 6, and let's go down along a vertical line until we get horizontally right across from the other point, and then we travel across so that we have a right angle. All right, so we've got to find the length of A and B so that we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. Well, to get the side length of A, because we're traveling along um, a vertical line, we can look at the rise of it. So we see that from like down here, the Y value is 5, whereas up here, the Y value is 6. So we are just traveling up a distance of a, um, 1. Now, if we go 6 minus 5, we'll get 1. 5 minus 6, we get negative 1. So we do the absolute value to make sure that we get a positive number. All right, so remember, we can take y1, one of the y values, minus the other y value, and then we take the absolute value, and that's going to tell us what a is. All right, and then we want to find the value of b, so we look at the x values. Right here, the x value of this point is negative 3. The x value of this point over here is positive 2. So we want to get the distance between those, so we can take negative 3 minus 2. We get a negative 5. An absolute value will make it 5, or we can go to minus negative 3. But those are the x values of the point. So we take either one, and we'll say x1 minus x2, and then we'll take the absolute value. Okay? Well, to get the distance, then, we're going to apply the Pythagorean theorem. So we want a squared plus b squared. We know that that is equal to c squared. So we're going to use that formula that we are very 
familiar with. Oops, I forgot the squared. Okay, so if to, the length of A then is the difference of the y's in our diagram. I know that I want to take the absolute value of y1 minus y2, but I'm going to square it, so that's going to make it positive. So I can get rid of the absolute value bars and just show, just put that in parentheses and square it, okay? Because that will make it positive. For the b value, once again, I need to take the b squared, so the absolute values then um, we don't need to use anymore because the squaring process will make it positive. So we go x1 minus x2 quantity squared. So we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Well, we want the length of c, so we don't want to know c squared. We want to know what c is. So the opposite of squaring is taking the square root. So that's where that formula comes from. And we usually put the x's first, but it's not going to matter. So I'll rearrange it when I write the formula here. x1 minus x2, quantity squared. And maybe you even learned it x1, x2 minus x1. Well, that's the same thing. So here we have our distance formula. So I hope that helps you remember how it's formed, because I have kids a lot that can't remember, oh, do you add or subtract there? Well, within here we're subtracting because we're looking for the distance between the x values and the distance between the y values. And to get distance, we always subtract. So there is our distance formula. So in place of a C, let's just turn that into a D. So we know the distance between two points, we can use this formula, all right? Well, let's try that formula then. Let's take the point negative 3, negative 1. And then let's take the point um, 4, 2. So we want to find the distance between those. All right, so remember we're looking for this shortest path to get between those two points to get the distance, but we get that from applying the Pythagorean theorem. We want to look to see how far apart the x's are and how far apart the y values are. All right, so um, if I look at the horizontal distance then, I subtract the x values of the coordinates. So negative 3 minus 4. So negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7, but we take the absolute value to get 7. All right, so there's the distance between the x's. Now we need to find the distance in between the y's. So I take the y values and subtract them. So negative 1 minus 2, or we can subtract it the other way. Negative 1 minus negative 2 gives us a negative 3, the absolute value is 3, all right? So these values then, we are going to apply to the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that the um, 7 squared, and we get the 7 from taking, once again, negative 3 minus 4, and we square the difference in the y's, and we add them together because a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And c squared is the distance that we're looking for. So I'll replace the c squared with the d squared, which is the length of the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So 7 squared plus 3 squared is equal to our distance squared. So that's why we want to get rid of, we want to find the distance. So d then is going to equal the square root of the 7 squared, which is 49, plus the 3 squared, which is 9. So we get the square root of 58. That's our distance between those two points or the length of the segment. All right? 
let's say now, let's take a look at midpoint. Um, let's go with the point negative 2, 2. And let's take the point 4, 0. All right, now we're going to switch it up. We were just talking about distance. Now we're going to look at midpoint. Okay, so the midpoint is where is the point that is right in between those, those two points? And I'm guessing that it's going to be right about here. So I need an ordered pair. So we're looking for the midpoint. So it's not a length. It's an x and a y value. All right. Well, to get halfway in between, I can take a look at the x values. Like this x value here is negative 2. This x value here is 4. So halfway in between a negative 2 and 4, to get halfway in between it, we find the average of them. And the average is what we get when we add. And because we're adding two things, we divide it by 2. Okay? So the negative 2 and the 4 represented the x values of those points. One of them is x1, one of them is x2. So we're adding the x coordinates together and we're dividing by 2. All right, so when we do that, negative 2 plus 4 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So in our particular problem then, halfway in between negative 2 and 4, we say is 1. And yes, indeed, that x value, that is 1 there, okay? All right, now we want to do the same thing for the y's. So this y value is 2. The y value of this point over here is 0. So I want to take the 2 and the 0, and I want to find halfway in between them. So to get halfway in between again, we take our two numbers and we find the average. Average means we add the numbers together and divide by how many we have. Well, we only have two numbers, so we're dividing by 2. So remember the 2 and the 0 represented the y values. So we take the first y, so let's go y1 plus y sub 2, add them together and divide by 2. And that gives us the y value of the point. So 2 plus 0 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the midpoint is the point 1, 1. And to get the midpoint, we take the average of the x's and the average of the y values of the two endpoints. Okay, so there is our formula for midpoint. And once again, um, most of our formulas like slope and distance and stuff, we subtract the x's, but a midpoint is different. A midpoint, we're looking for the average, so you always add. You always add. Translation of points. So let's take a simple figure. Let's just take um, a segment. So let's say we have the segment with endpoints negative 2, 3. And then we have this point here, which is negative 3, 1. Sorry, my, there we go. I need commas there. They look like points I know to you. So we want to take this segment and we want to translate it. We want to move it to the right three units. And then we want to go down two. So that's a translation or a slide. Okay? So if we move the points to the right three, that means that the x values are being shifted. We want to go this direction, three units. There's two, so we want to go right here. We want to go three units to the right. Well, wherever our x values were before then, 
we want to move to the right, and the right is a positive distance. So we're taking those x values and we were adding 3 to them. All right, so negative 2 plus 3 gives me a new x value of 1 for point x here. And for point y, I'm taking the x value of a negative 3 and adding 3 to it. And I am now at an x value of 0. Okay, so we've moved it to the right 3. Now we want to go down 2. So from here, we want to go down 2. There's 1. So we want to go down up to here. Okay, so moving it, shifting it down 2 means the y value is 2 units lower. So I want to take the y value that we have up there for point x, so 3, and I want to subtract 2 from it. So that gives me a 1. So the point negative 2, 3 now is shifted to this point, which is now 1, 1. Okay. The point negative 3, 1 then, I've moved it to the right 3. I want to now move it down 2. So the original y value, which is 1, I want to take it down 2 units. So now it is at negative 1. So the coordinate of this translated point is 0, negative 1. Okay, so that's how translations work. Hopefully you remember that from geometry. Okay, another thing we want to look at is, um, like, can you describe transformations of graphs? So let's just take any point. Let's say we have the point x, y, and we want to uh, transform it to the point negative x, y. Well, can you tell me what kind of transformation that we are doing? So our transformations from geometry are... Uh, reflections and slides and rotations. So if we have a point x, y, and it's turning into the point negative x, y, so what kind of translation has been formed there? Well, if we take a look at the Cartesian coordinate system, so let's say this represents x, y. The point negative x, y will be this point here. So the transformation is a reflection in the y. Reflection in y. Oh, it doesn't want to write very well. Reflection in, there we go, y. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. If we go from the point x, y, which is here again, x, y, and we want to go to x negative y. Well, x negative y will be this point right here. x comma negative y. Well, our, let's see, let's go with blue. So this point now is going into this point. So now we have a reflection in the x. So the transformation then from x, y x negative y is a reflection in the x. Okay, and then the last thing, so we're going to take the point x, y, and we're going to uh, transform it to negative x, negative y. Well, that would put it down here. And you can talk about it as a double reflection, a reflection in the x and the y, but actually it is being rotated 180 degrees. So this is a rotation about the origin. So it's a rotation 180 degrees about the origin. Okay, so that's the transformation there from x, y to negative x, negative y. All right, I think that looks pretty good for the stuff you need in um, section one. So we'll work on some of those problems in class. All right, thanks for your attention.